Uh, my name is Ben Hurd, and, and I'm from uh, Sparta, Missouri. And I, I kind of, through the years, have specialized in, in this type of traditional stone masonry. Uh, I've worked on a lot of uh, 1800s fireplaces and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, become interested uh, not only in the stone masonry, but the uh, traditional mortars as well. What we're doing here uh, on this fireplace, we're on uh, uh, we're on the kind of the first firebox. This is a double uh, fireplace. We we had a historic photograph uh, that I suppose was probably early 1900s. Uh, it it showed uh, the type of fireplace that we're reconstructing here. Uh, most of the fireplaces uh, during that that time period uh, were all uh, of, a, of a kind of a natural bed type, uh, especially in this area. And by that, I, uh, by natural bed, what I mean is that the, the stones are laid in the same uh, in the same position that they were when they were were in the ground. So that's their natural bed. Like this stone right here, laying this way, that's the way it was. Uh, now these stones uh, were, were quarried in, 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 in various ways, uh, uh, different, uh, a lot of different quarrying techniques. When these stones uh, are, are, are broken out of the, the ground in, in various ways, uh, of course they're, they're rough. And uh, what they did is uh, use various tools to, uh, to shape or to fabricate these stones. Uh, so that they'd be suitable to, to construct something with. Uh, the, the most popular uh, techniques for that, they're really uh, fairly simple. Uh, this stone, uh, uh, well, this, is, this was quarried, but it's real rough. And, uh, you know, they just take and they make a straight line across it like that. Uh, and then they usually use something like this. It's called a, a pitching tool, and uh, you just... Uh, do it like this and uh, that'll give it a, a straight edge all the way across. In this case uh, you, you, you have some stone sticking out here in the middle uh, and that's called a, a bull nose. Uh, depending on what they were doing a lot of times they would leave this bull nose uh, and it just come way out in the middle. Here's a stone right here uh, this is part of the, uh, the arch that we're going to uh, install here in a little while on this fireplace. And uh, this one was uh, worked down to just flat, almost completely flat. And to do that, they used, uh, oh, uh, a lot of times they use a tool like this. It's like a great big uh, meat tenderizer, and they call that a, a, uh, a bush hammer. And, and they just knock it down like that and work it on down. Uh, another tool uh, that was used uh, a lot in this area, uh, and it does uh, the, basically the same function, uh, it's called a patent hammer. And it's just a, a hammer that's got, well see this one's got six different blades on it. And, and, and you just work it down like this. So the, uh, the objective for this project, the fireplace, is we want to uh, usually work these stones down to uh, uh, maybe uh, oh, 08 or 10 inch depth, maybe something like this. Uh, this is a stone that's, that's ready to go into the fireplace. But we're using a mortar uh, that does contain a little bit of white Portland cement, just a little bit, but uh, in the old days, uh, they used only what they call lime mortar. There was no cement in it, it was just lime. So uh, we're using a lot the same technique uh, in that when we lay the stone, we want to shim uh, uh, and make sure they're tight, make sure they don't wiggle around. They, they, they set in, you know, structural. So. Uh, we're, we don't want to depend on the mortar uh, to, to hold this thing together. We want to lay this uh, in such a way that if all of a sudden the mortar would just disappear, uh, the structure would, uh, 
would, would be intact. This is the, this is the first floor uh, firebox, fireplace. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're building kind of what they call a, a, a modified Rumford uh, type fireplace in the, in the late 1700s and the very early 1800s. The uh, fireplace design and efficiency of, a, of an open fireplace was a, a big topic. Uh, a, lo a lot of talk about it, a lot written about it. Uh, there was a fellow in the, in the late 1700s uh, by the name of Benjamin Thompson, re they referred to him later as, as Count Rumford, uh, that did a lot of work on, uh, on fireplace design. And what we're doing here is, a, uh, which was very popular in the early 1800s, even in this area, uh, is, is a modified uh, Rumford fireplace and kind of the long and short of, uh, of that is that it had a little bit more uh, slope on the sides uh, and and as I said this is a modified Rumford if, if it had it been a true Rumford fireplace it would have been a lot more sloped than this generally speaking um, they're they're more shallow uh, than a lot of fireplaces um, and uh, and, and there's quite a bit of difference in, in the shape in the throat, which I, I can't really show that to you, but uh, we're getting ready here in just a little while. We're gonna uh, start to install the, uh, the arch across here. Uh, so, and, and in the Rumford fireplace, it, it would have been built up and gone back to kind of a specific uh, shape. And uh, this, uh, this just made a fireplace that was a, a lot more efficient at, Put out a lot more heat, um, and it, and it uh, due to the design of the throat on a, on this uh, Rumford style of fireplace, uh, it drew a lot less air out of the house. Uh, so it just it just uh, would, would do a lot better job of heating. It takes a long time to shape and fabricate these stones to to make this fireplace. They're uh, the, the shape they are uh, uh, for a reason and they have to be specifically a certain way and it's, it's relatively time consuming. So what we have done is, is fabricated this stone in our own uh, shop. We've transported it down and, and now we're, all we're doing now is assembling the fabricated pieces. We're, we're not doing all the fabrication here.